All right. Here we are, first morning. Are you guys ready? So today we're going to talk about another forever thing about God. Did you guys know that there's a lot of forever things about God? Last night we talked about that he was forever love and that he's forever savior. And today we're going to talk about the fact that God is forever good. God is forever good. Can you say that with me? God is forever good. Say it one more time. God is forever good. Now, good is a confusing word because sometimes we can say that something is good and we, we don't really think it's great, it's just good. Like if I pulled out a candy, Now there's some people that would say, yeah, Reese's peanut butter cups, they're, they're good. And then other people might say, no, Reese's peanut butter cups are the best, they're my favorite, they're so good, they're so great. So a candy bar is good, right? I personally really like Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Are you all tasting it with me? <laughs> I can say that those are good. I can get a grade on a test, and there are some families that if you get like a C on a test, they'll say, well, that's a, good, that's a good grade. There's other families that if you say, I got a C on a test, they'll think that is not a good grade. It's only good if it's an A, okay? Or a B, they are, my husband's family, when he grew up, it was only good if it was an A. So he felt a lot of pressure in school because it was only good if it was an A. So see how confusing a word good can be? Like to some people, it just means kind of almost average, not that great. Okay, I have, I have some guys I wanna show you pictures of. So um, I have LeBron. All right, and I have Steph Curry. Oh, wrong guy. That's Clay Thompson. I have Clay Thompson and I have Steph Curry. Now some people would say, look, those are good basketball players. But to some people, the definition of good, I mean, some people will say, no, LeBron is not just a good basketball player. Steph Curry is not just a good basketball player. Clay Thompson, not just a good basketball player. There we would say, really great, some of the greatest ones right now that we have some of the greatest shooters. LeBron, kind of the all around great, and then those two guys, great shooters. But again, confusing word good, right? Because to some people it means one thing and to others, maybe you sometimes you'll hear people say, oh, that Reagan, she's a good kid. Now to some people that might mean, wow, that kid's outstanding. And to some people when you say, oh, she's a good kid, that's kind of like a, yeah, you know, eh, 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 kind of a, mm, she's, well, she's good. So it's important that we understand and we get our definition and our brain right for when we say that God is good. We don't mean like the good of a good candy bar or a good basketball player, or a good grade on a test. He's way beyond that. He himself is good because that's totally who he is. God is everything that is good in the world. So everything good, he is way better than a Reese's peanut butter cup. He is way better at, than LeBron or Clay Thompson. He's way better 
than the best person that you can think of. I mean, he's even way better than Wayne Vinson, who is practically Jesus. And so he's better than that. Good is the opposite of evil. In the dictionary, it says that good is having the qualities required for a particular role. So when we say somebody's a good basketball player, it's that they have all the skills to be a good basketball player, right? It also means that which is morally right and righteous. God is with us because he is good, and his goodness is always with us, and it's going to be forever. His goodness is not based on your behavior. His goodness is not based on the family that you came from. His goodness is not based on whether you know him or not. God is good because that's who he is. He's good forever. He's good every hour, every minute, every second of every day. So God is good forever. In Psalm 145, verse 7, it says, They shall wait eagerly and utter the memory of your abundant goodness, and they will shout joyfully of your righteousness. In the New Living Translation, it says, everyone, are you part of the everyone? Does everyone mean everyone? All right, if you're part of the everyone, raise your hand. All right, it says, everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness. What's our job? To share the story of his wonderful goodness. And we are to sing with joy about his righteousness. The word of God tells us to give memory of his goodness and to share the story of his goodness. It's really important that we have joy and thankfulness in our lives for God's release of goodness on the earth and in our individual lives. Thankfulness and joyfulness are super important. God's going to be good whether we're thankful or joyful. But when we say and acknowledge with joy and thanksgiving about his goodness, it does something inside of us. If we don't think about and celebrate and talk about the goodness of God, our lives will be a little bit empty because it's in celebrating God's goodness that joy and thanksgiving overflow in our lives. The most important thing to know about God's righteousness is means that he is always right. Did you know that God is always right? He doesn't make a mistake. He is always right. He is always good. Everything he does, everything he says, everything he thinks is good and it is right. He is never wrong. Not even just a little bit. I mean, sometimes we can say, well, you're mostly right, but you're a little bit wrong. God does not fall into that category. Can you imagine that? What would it be like if you were always right? How many of you have not ever in your whole life made a mistake? Is there anyone who's never made a mistake? All right. How many of you always, always, always tell the truth? You have never lied in your whole life. Never, ever told a lie. All right. Because are we God? No, and so it's really hard for us to always be right. So what are some ways that God shows his goodness to us? I want everybody to lay your head on your table, hide your faces. Thank you, Callum, you're doing it just right. Good job. Faces down. All right, we're going to get really quiet, and I just want you right now to think, God, how do you show me your goodness? How do I see your goodness? We're just going to be quiet, and I want you to think about that. Ask the Lord in your mind, and then be quiet and 
Let him show you ways that he's good. Okay, you can put your heads up. I hope some of you were able to think of some ways that God shows his goodness to you. How does he show his goodness? Well, first of all, he made us. He saved us. He provides for us. We could make a list that goes on and on talking about how God shows his goodness to each and every one of us. The Bible tells us that we are to practice, that we are to rehearse. Remember last night when we did our skit and I said it was an improv skit that, that we had no practice? So when I practice something, it means I say my lines. Like if I'm trying to, I'm gonna be in a play and I'm gonna um, be one of the people in the cast and I have my script and so I practice my lines and so I say them over and over until I can memorize them. And then when I get them memorized, maybe then I practice with my voice, how I'm going to say things excitedly. God, you care for me and you love me and you provide for me and you're always there for me. So I go from just a flat rehearsal to having some emotion and some conviction and belief in what I'm practicing. We need to speak out the goodness of God. Do you know a lot of times what comes out of our mouth is what kind of stuff? Words, complaining. How many of you complain? How many of you maybe this morning said, oh, do we have to clean our cabin? <laughs> Nobody said that, right? You were all like, yes! I get to clean my cabin. God is so good. He's giving me hands to clean with. He's given me a counselor who's awesome and gives me great instruction. So do you see the difference? When we let words of goodness about the Father come out, it changes the whole way we can look at something. So what we're going to do now is rather than me list out a whole bunch of ways that God is good in our cabins and we can spread out counselors. We don't, you don't have to stay at your table because it might get too noisy if we're all bunched up. So I'm gonna give you each, each cabin will get some paper slips and you're going to, to talk together about ways that God shows his goodness. All right, you're going to think of different ways. It can be big things like he sent Jesus. That's, he's so good, he sent Jesus. That can be, you know, something that's like, woo. And then it can be as simple as he, he gave me breakfast this morning. All right, do you see how it can be? Aren't there a lot of ways that God is good? And so you're going to write these. And how many of you ever made a paper countdown chain? Yes. Like at the days to Christmas or something? Yeah. So then as you write your things down, you're going to take them and you're going to loop them. So my God is good comment's going to be on the inside. You're going to loop them. And then I have a package, a thing of glue dots, and you're gonna have somebody else stick the glue dot on there and you'll hook it, then you'll think of another one and you're gonna make a chain. Now there's, there's 10 or 12 slips in every one, but if your cabin is on a roll and you can think of way more than the ones I gave you, I've got a whole nother stack that you can come and get extras. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna make a paper chain of all the ways that you can think of that God is good to all of you. And then at the end, we'll come back together and we're gonna loop all 14 cabins, our chains together, and we'll see how far our chain of God's goodness goes through. Now, will there be, will there be duplicates? Will a lot of cabins maybe say the same thing? That's okay because that's part of the telling our story. That's part of the rehearsing. That's part of the speaking out. So don't worry if we are duplicating. But let's see 
how long our chain of God's goodness be this morning? Because we know that his goodness is forever. Our chain can't go on forever, but I bet it can be really, really long, okay? So we're gonna, um, Ariana, Michelle, Andy, you wanna come help pass out? <coughs> so we're gonna pass out chains and a thing of glue dots, and then counselors, you can spread out in here, you can sit on the floor. If you wanna go outside and be around the dining hall area, you can do that. There's one that's a big bun.